Hey guys, Jason here and welcome to another episode of Driver's Paddock. Today we're at Toronto Motorsports Park and behind me is not one, but two 2023 Camaro SS1LEs. You might ask me what the difference between the two is. Well, one is an automatic and the other is a six-speed manual. And I'll be track testing both and at the end, I'll give you my thoughts. Let's take a closer look at both cars. Let's go. So I'm here with one of the owners. His name is Jackson. Yep. Jackson, thank you so much for letting me drive your car. Thank and, you. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the SS1 LE and what the 1 LE package offers? All right. So um, for the SS1 LE package, I believe it had add on some a bit of the cooling, but I'm not sure where. There's a front end extraction on the hood, which uh, improved your radiator performance. But um, that also add on some aero performance too for the front downforce. There's also a lip here that helps with that, but that mostly I think deals with the lift rather than creating actual downforce. Um, Cause there's no under aero anything. It's not like a GT4 RS. It actually has like two or three inches of like overhang here, right? It's right. It's actually quite a lot. It's actually quite a lot. It's yeah, actually, yeah. Um, it will increase your insurance dollars just because of that. Yeah, that I got you, got you, got you. Um, there's also a uh, the, the wheels uh, are 20 inch. Okay. And they give you wider tires than normal SS. There's a 285 on the front, 305 in the rear. Um, it also gives you the famous magnet ride, which is used on a lot of like expensive cars. It's owned by GM, but it's not now, but it's very useful. Uh, it's semi-active. So the rear uh, differential is also semi-active. It's um, electronically controlled uh, multi-plate. So just like an M car. Hmm. Uh, and there's also a little bit lip over there, but that's also like just for um, controlling the lift. Like a little bit of a rear spoiler, you mean, yeah. right? Yeah, rear okay. stability on, on some high speed yeah. stuff. Yeah, it also comes with the beautiful Recaro seats, right? Oh uh, yeah, it does, but uh, it's, it's pretty heavy. Uh, as a, this is a 2SS, so it comes with all the creature comforts, uh, including heated and cooled seats that add its weight, but uh, yeah. Uh, I also have a sunroof yeah, because yeah. I took some allocation. Sun, I saw the sunroof on both cars. Both of the cars are uh, taken from allocation of the others. You can never get an allocation by yourself because there's uh, this car typically does not exist for, for GM. They just don't build them for, for Canada at all. So everybody, we're in the Camaro SS1 LE. We are going to start with the manual version. And... Uh, my good friend Chris Pachinski has one of these and he has been kicking ass in our local time attack scene with this car. So his car has 315 square CRS with a really good alignment. Uh, but man, that guy is an absolute monster. And so his fastest lap around here, I think on the CRS was a 116, 7, 8, something like that. And um, I think he did like a once a mid 117 on the stock supercar three so i will try to get as close to that as possible in the limited time that i have with this car so let's head out and track and uh, let's see what we can do
Yeah, it's good. Hope you go flat so early. Holy crap. This is taking care of it for me. the brakes that is ice mode ladies and gentlemen that is ice mode so i just did my first few laps in the camaro ss1le this is a 2023 and the first thing i gotta say is the ice mode was terrifying uh basically the entire brake pedal firms up like crazy and you have no stopping power and I think I know where I made the mistake is you cannot brake when you go when you attack the curb and uh, you have to brake when I guess all four wheels are sort of planted in the chicane there is like the uh, left bump and then the right bump I think I have to actually brake come off the ease off the brake and then brake again uh, I think that's the only way that I'm gonna make it out of there fast and uh, initial impressions uh, let's talk first about the motor. It sounds amazing like 6.2 liter V8 naturally aspirated and when you get on the power It doesn't upset the car. The power band is so linear and along with the PTM It's really amazing. I can go full throttle so early There are some parts where it does hold me back a little bit uh, But it's really really good and I just want to talk a little bit about the difference between stability control and traction control essentially Traction control deals with the wheel spin and stability control um, deals with the yaw, the yaw of the car. And uh, this PTM works really, really, really well. I'm blown away by it. And I want to get this across. This car, everything works together. The motor, the gearbox, the pedals, the steering, the electronically controlled differential. I just want to talk a little bit about that as well. It's so good when you're uh, in a straight line when you're braking it's i feel like the differential is open and that's good the car feels very free and on turning the diff feels very open as well but as soon as i get on the power there's an ever so slight delay but way better than the bmw m cars like the the f87 generation there's a feels like what it's like a half a second to a second delay when that diff really gets to maximum lock but this car is very very fast and the computers are definitely doing something amazing I, it's taking um, you know input from my throttle from the steering from uh, the yaw rates the wheel speed sensors to essentially get me out of this corner and you can really feel the the diff increase in locking strength and locking power and really push you out of the corners along with the PTM managing the yaw the car and um, the, and the motor uh, being NA and being the power band being so smooth, this car has no inherent vices. You're not driving around any problems besides this ice mode that I've experienced. But otherwise, I'm blown away. Um, and 
it's disappointing that I'm only finding out about, you know, learning more about Camaro SS1 LEs now, uh, in 2023 now, it's sorry, 2024 now. Uh, these are pretty much being discontinued and that's a shame. Okay, so we're about to head out in the automatic car. Small trick for everybody. Pull the seatbelt all the way out. Buckle it in. Let it come all the way in. Pull it nice and tight. And now it's locked. Okay. Then move your seat slightly farther forward. And uh, it's going to hold you really, really nice and tight. So let's head out on track in the automatic SS1 LE. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Okay, that's not bad. 
That is not bad. And my good friend and teammate on my endurance racing team, Chris Pachinski, he has been dominating in a Camaro SS 1LE in local time attack. And uh, his time here is a 116.8, and that car has 315 square CRS uh, with brake pads, fluids, everything. This car is bone stock. Uh, but hands down to him, that's an incredible time. That is so fast. A few people make my knees shake when I uh, head out on grid, and he's definitely one of them. My knees are wobbling. But back to the car, uh, the automatic, first of all, it's a 10 speed and it's shifting all the time. And uh, on upshifts, it's super, super fast. But on the downshifts, it is a little bit sluggish. And the thing is, at this track where there's some really big braking zones where you're going down two gears, um, when I double downshift, it's only giving me one gear. And like, say in my BMW DCT, it'll give me both gears right away as I'm braking. And I can kind of use the uh, engine to brake a little bit to help slow me down. I can't really do that in this car. Um, maybe it's a me thing. Maybe I need to give it some time to downshift. Um, in the automatic mode, it, it's great. It works very well. Uh, but the one I would buy is definitely the six-speed manual. The gearbox is so good. And just to come back to this car being the full package, you know, the NA motor with that, that pulls all the way to red line, um, the power band that doesn't upset the car when you get on the throttle, uh, long wheelbase, so it's very stable and high speeds. Um, you do feel some of the weight in the hairpins, like turn six, turn eight, but it's very nimble uh, and you can rotate the car with throttle. So it, it's very nimble, very agile. And this is very classic FR uh, behavior, uh, you know, front engine, rear wheel drive. You don't high horsepower. You don't want to over speed into corners because if you do, uh, essentially the car will understeer. And then if you do understeer, you're going to be very delayed on throttle. And with so much horsepower, you want to make use of that horsepower. So you need to manage the front end, get it in, hit your apexes, and do not be delayed on power. And the adjustability comes through the right pedal. More throttle means more yaw, more rotation, and less the car will straighten out. Or you could correct slightly with your steering as well. And I just want to say, every single part of this car, again, works in unison uh, to help the driver go fast one other thing the magna ride suspension when we're talking about suspension we can talk about a few things but in terms of damping okay um, there are four things there's high speed compression low speed compression high speed rebound and low speed rebound and low speed compression is basically like when you get on the gas you know when you're shifting weight to the rear when you break your shifting weight weight to the front when you turn to the right you're shifting weight to the left side of the vehicle that's what we would consider low speed compression high speed compression is more of those bumps uh, when you're hitting uh, you know let's say you hit a pothole you know the the suspension is going to travel very quickly or if you're getting on a curb on the track, uh, that was what we would consider high speed compression. Low speed rebound is when you, uh, you know, when you brake and you shift weight to the front, for example, it's how quickly does that low speed come back up and, you know, with turning and with getting on the gas as well. And the high speed is, uh, you know, when you have a high speed compression, you know, how quickly does that wheel come back down? And the thing is, I am blown away by the high speed compression and rebound in this car. When I attack those curbs, the suspension literally, I barely feel it through, through the chassis. Boom, high speed compression good. And then it settles in one stroke. I can feel the wheel right back onto the ground again. What I don't really like is the uh, low speed compression and rebound. I feel like the car is a little bit floaty, a little bit jittery. And uh, you know, when you do load it up, I wish it was a bit firmer. Maybe it's because of the spring rates. I think this car is slightly undersprung. Um, if it had better spring rates and maybe some some tuning of the Magna Ride to perform better on track, I think I would like a little bit more. But it's amazing. It's it's really good. I'm just nitpicking a little bit here and there, and uh, maybe that's why the SS1 LE and the higher end Corvettes uh, don't run the Magna Ride. They run their um, you know real um, track suspension. Uh, but still this this is amazing and i drove around a little bit on the street as well it's so comfortable in, in the comfort setting it, it's amazing the fact that you have a, a set of dampers that can be that comfortable on the street handle high speed compression rebound that well and also have fairly good uh, low speed rebound and compression i can't complain this car really is the full package
So I'm super impressed with the SS1LE. And uh, if we can get some clean laps, I think we can get closer and closer to Chris's time. So the Camaro SS1LE, what an amazing car. And everything from beginning to end was well thought out by GM. From the engine to the transmissions available, to the differential, to the traction control, the PTM, the seating position, the seats, everything is working harmoniously to provide an amazing track driving experience. So I'm here with both of the owners. And Jackson, why don't you go first? Tell us about what are some of the cars you've owned in the past and what are your plans with your Camaro SS1LE? Right, so uh, I used to own a WRX STI, and that's just a track day car. Uh, and I did a lot of like track day modifications, a lot of oil coolings and stuff to make that just reliable. But since this car already is at such a high platform where it comes as like a track car, the next plan for this car would just be um, fine tune out my um, my wanted alignments, uh, put on some 315 square tires to extract like to get the potential up then try to like tune it up to to match it yeah but otherwise it doesn't need anything right like these cars are out of the box ready to go right, right. yeah it, it's they're, they're just amazing and the thing is like if you're a newer driver if you just keep all the um traction control the ptm on the um you know more forgiving modes this is a perfectly fine car to learn on right the power band isn't spiky it has a longer wheelbase so it's more forgiving um, but if you're a hardcore track enthusiast or you're chasing tents or you're trying to do competition in this car you just put the ptm onto track you turn off the uh, regular uh, traction control and and you're ready to go this car is absolutely amazing yeah tell us a little bit about your car why you bought it and what are your plans with it yeah so uh this is uh, actually my first car I never really owned any car before, so uh, there's a one car that I drove before, which is the E46 uh, 325. Okay, okay, great so car. So I heard this car's uh, chassis is the reverse engineer of the E46. Okay. So that's why I bought this car. Who told you that? Is that true? There's is there truth to that? Uh, there is a lot of GM re engineering on a lot of stuff okay you could see that there's a lot of resemblance of this car from m2 such as the um mcpherson struck the the lower wishbones are separated like okay. m which okay. is aluminum the yep. rear suspension looks very much like m the rear differential the the clutch plate that is like electronic controlled very like m yeah that's and right. also like c8 that's a reverse engineering of 458 so gm like to do that stuff that's not an i see i see Listen, I am a diehard BMW fan. I own an M2 competition track car build. And uh, this differential is like, it's way better. It's way better. There's no delay like in the F87s where it's almost like half a second you're waiting for that diff to lock up and keep up. Uh, but this one, like it's it's almost immediate. It, it's so much better. It really pushes out of the corners and there's immediacy um, to the way that it locks up more and more and more as it pushes you out of the corner. Yeah. Um, so what are your plans with uh, the SS1 LE? Uh... So I'm I'm planning to keep this on. Okay. Because I'm still working on my driver skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great car to learn up, but it's also your daily driver, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So an amazing car. So from from front to back, like everything works together amazingly. And I can't say enough praises about the SS1 LE. And the thing is, these are 2023 models, right? Right. Yeah. You guys are some of the last people that'll ever buy one from factory, is that right? Oh. There is 2024, but they ended production late 2023. So yes, there's um pretty much no more M1LE on market brand new right now. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that honestly, GM, you spent so much time developing this car. It's amazing. If there's anyone out there that's listening, like please keep making this car. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.